My name is Paul Wollover. The name of my company is Pinellas Power Products. This is going to be the installation instruction video for the auto choke on the EU3000IS Honda generator. Basically, there are a lot of companies on the market making uh, generator backup controllers for solar power installations, wind farm installations, or uh, power backup for your home in case of a hurricane, and they will automatically start a generator. However, the Honda EU3000IS has a manual choke that you have to pull out on in order to start it. It does not come with an automatic choke. With my automatic choke, it will allow the Honda EU3000IS to be used with a lot of the uh, auto start mechanisms for generators that are on the market. Installation of this kit, very simple and straightforward. The entire kit functions the same way as the auto choke on my wireless remote control system. It's just that now I'll be selling the choke portion of it separately. The first step to installing it is going to be to remove the back cover of the generator. The back cover is held on with four acorn nuts. The acorn nuts that hold the plastic covers on, the rear and the front plastic cover, you'll notice have a large flange. So if you do have several panels off at the same time, there are acorn nuts on the small metal panel. The acorn nuts that go on the metal panel down below have a small flange, where these from the rear plastic panel have a large flange. Go ahead and slide the rear cover off. When you slide the rear cover off, there are four metal inserts that go into the cover and around each of the studs. So make sure that all four of them are either in the plastic cover or that they are still on the studs. At any rate, don't lose them. The next thing is there's a foam gasket that goes through this groove. And when you pull the cover off, you'll see that right here in this corner, the foam gasket has popped out a little bit. And in this corner, the foam gasket has popped out, and that's really quite common. Just go ahead and tuck it back into place. And the whole purpose of this foam gasket is simply for sound deadening. This generator is a really, really quiet generator, and we'd like to keep it that way. bolts that hold the grill on have a flange. They're just six millimeter bolts with a 10 millimeter head. They are identical to the bolts that hold this bottom panel on, except for the bolts in the bottom panel are painted black. The ones that hold the exhaust grill are silver. Just keep the black ones down here. It just looks nicer. step is going to be to remove the handle. The handle is held on with four 
8 millimeter bolts that have 12 millimeter heads. Now take the rear lower panel off. It also uses four six millimeter bolts with 10 millimeter heads on them. And these are the ones that are painted black. If you're working on a generator that's California approved or after 2013, it'll have a purge canister for emissions. In that case, it'll have a hole in the cover for this hose to come out of. If it is a non-California approved model, there will be no purge canister, there will be no hole here. What I'm going to do now is pull the fiberglass heat shield off the back of the generator. The easiest way to do that is to walk the top of it out, then the bottom of it. If it is non-California approved, fiberglass heat shield comes all the way down on this side as well as this side. What I'm going to have to do is hook my fingers around the front and spread it out just a little bit to get it to come out over the cleats. As you see the motor mounts down here, the heat shield curves in under it, so you have to wiggle it out very gently. Okay. The whole purpose of pulling this whole back part off was in order to mount a temperature sensor right to this little flange by the exhaust manifold. The temperature sensor is going to control the choke so that it does not attempt to choke when the engine is already warmed up. This is the temperature sensor that comes in the kit. What you'll be doing is mounting the temperature sensor right to this flange. Make certain that you don't get it touching the nut. I'm not concerned about it touching the nut with respect to grounding out. I just don't want, because this is a thinner panel, the panel will tremble or vibrate at engine RPMs and I don't want it touching that because then it'll wear back and forth and possibly damage the temperature sensor. And since it's so easy to go ahead and mount it over to where you do have a slight gap, Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to mark where the bottom hole goes. take a drill with a 1 8 drill bit and I'm going to drill a hole
kit comes with screws to mount the temperature sensor in place. Take one of the screws, put it at the bottom hole of the temperature sensor, just to mark the spot, just to hold it in place. Then we're going to go ahead and punch where the top screw hole goes. I'm going to go ahead and remove the sensor while I drill the hole. You can use a magic marker or a punch or I use an automatic center punch. Whatever works best for you to mark the location of the holes. Now we have two holes, one for each of the screws on the temperature sensor. When I mount the temperature sensors, I prefer to mount them this way as opposed to like this. The reason being, if this terminal touches the bolt, this is a ground screw anyway. This terminal needs to be grounded. I just don't want it to touch the bolt because of vibration. So if you mount it like this and it does accidentally touch it won't wind up choking the motor all the time whereas if you got it like this and this one touches the motor will choke whether it's hot or cold and we don't want to risk that so I'm going to put the sensor in place and put the top screw in I'm just going to put it in a couple of turns just to get it started. Then I'm going to take the ring terminal and wrap it around and put it around the bottom screw and then run the bottom screw through the sensor and then go ahead and tighten down both the screws. Incidentally, the drill bit that I used was a 1 8 inch drill bit. I don't recommend going to a larger drill bit because these screws can be turned down into a 1 8 and that way they bite nicely. Then take the wire that comes from the temperature sensor and we're going to feed it through to the front of the engine area. There's a rubber grommet around this heat shield that goes between the heat shield right here and this edge heat shield. We're just going to push the rubber grommet back just a little bit and the wire will slide right through there. If you see, that rubber grommet moves quite easily. I'm going to push a screwdriver through from this end. And there's my wire. Once I get the wire routed through, then you can slide it down. Now you'll notice these two hoses. These go to the purge canister. And they are only on the California approved versions. So if you have an earlier version or a non-California approved, you won't have these hoses getting in the way, which will actually make your job easier. You'll only want to pull about six inches of the wire into this cabinet area. Then come around to the back. Make certain that this wire isn't being pinched 
or burn to the engine block or something like that. Just route it to where it's a nice gentle loop. If this wire does get shorted to the engine block, it will choke whether it's hot or cold. And that's what we want to avoid. The whole purpose of this sensor is to make it choke or not choke based on engine temperature. So now we have plenty of play in the wire and it's not going to get scratched against anything. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and put this rear cover back on because we're finished with this portion of the job. Unfortunately, it's even trickier to get the cover back on than it was to take it off. What you can do that makes your life easier is simply unscrew these bottom studs. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do it that way just to demonstrate it. out of the way, the cover slides in a lot easier. Make sure the top goes under these studs. Notice I said it's easier, not easy. Okay, when you get the fiberglass cover in place correctly, you notice that there are two metal tabs from the bottom frame that hold the bottom of the fiberglass cover in place correctly. Make sure that those tabs are outside of the fiberglass cover. If you chose to remove the bottom studs in order to get it in place, go ahead and reinstall those now. Then we'll put the bottom panel with the hole for this. Sometimes when we put too much light on it, it reflected and glared back in the camera. Make sure that your hose from the purge tank comes out through it. Like I said, if you do not have the California approved model, you don't have a purge tank or a hose, so your problem is solved. Next step is to go ahead and put the handle on. I know it's counter it always seems like the grill should go on before the handle. However, if you put the grill on first, you can't get at the bolts to put the handle on as easily. Put the handle on and then put the grill over it.
Now the grill for the exhaust goes in place. And the exhaust grill is actually what holds the top of the fiberglass cover in place. You'll notice that the holes for the exhaust grill are slightly slotted. So we're going to go ahead and start all four of the bolts. And then I'm going to push the grill forward against the generator and tighten down the bolt that's the closest to the generator base on each side. And that way the grill is slid tight against the generator and it holds the fiberglass heat shield in place very snugly. It's going to be to take and make sure that all the metal inserts are in the plastic cover and make sure that the foam gasket is in the groove all the way around the plastic cover and slide it in place. just opening up the oil fill door make sure that the oil fill cap and the oil drain have come out through the grommet nicely take the four acorn nuts with the large flange go ahead and put those back in place still in place. The foam gasket didn't pop out anywhere along the side. Go ahead and close your oil from the door. And that concludes the installation of the temperature sensor for the automatic choke kit.